Jersey Baseball Nation, our preview of the 2024 high school season. We've had our delusional nice weather at the start of practice. We're going through some cold week now. We got about a week left until the start of the baseball season and just over two months until June 8th when the public schools crown their state champions at Veterans Park in Hamilton. Don't adjust your screens. That is not John Kroger with us anymore. Coach Kroger is up at Wagner helping the Seahawks to a first place start in the NEC, doing great things there. We are lucky to be joined by much younger, much better looking John McAdams. Um, John is uh, the, the man over at Perfect Game, uh, head of the Mid-Atlantic region, and certainly going to bring his insights to us as we go through the states. Welcome, J-Mac. It's been a long winter, but let's uh, let's get outside and get rolling. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. Definitely. Let's, uh, we will start today with taking a look at the larger public schools, Group 4, Group 3, as we look to uh, see who, whether Ridgewood in Group 4 and Morris Knowles in Group 3 can repeat as champs. Um, we've got uh, uh, certainly um, in Group 4, whether the uh, the sectional champs, uh Bayonne, Old Bridge, and Eastern, you know, all returning some talented squads. Can they repeat as sectional champs? And in group three, can Milburn, uh, Middletown North, who is working on a two-peat of its own already, and Mainland um, repeat as sectional champs? Uh, before we put J-Mac on the spot, we will start up in North Jersey in group four, where our champion Ridgewood comes out of group uh, of North One. And uh, let's talk a bit about their chances of repeating and what they've got looking back and 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 facing them this year. Yep, yep. And I think too. I mean, they have they've lost a lot with regards to stuff, but just getting that experience with regards to obviously being the defending champ, manipulating through that whole section, and on their way to obviously be the champions. Uh, that experience counts for for a lot. Um, so that's going to be a big factor with regards to it. Um, I don't really know if I see anybody in that general area there um, competing with them, but you never know. I mean, obviously, freshman arms could be transfers and so forth, too. Um, and there's always those sleeper teams that we talked about with regards to it. Um, that North New Jersey group or section one, um, it might be Ridgewoods for the taking again, but we'll have to see. No, for sure. And then and then if you look at group three, um an exciting or uh, certainly a, a, a fun bracket up in North One, obviously, Morris Knowles. We can talk about them quite a bit. You know, yeah. you're looking at probably, at least coming into the year, the number one public school team in the state because, you know, you, you start off with a, a draftable talent in Luke Dickerson, um, and then you pile on top um, Mike Simone, who is a, a monster, um, oh, yeah. you know, Brody Frecker, who hasn't, you know, couldn't even pitch last year, but but still, uh, you know, going to GW is a, a two-way powerhouse. He would be a star in most teams by himself. Dylan mm -hmm. Fitzsimmons, who's had as good an offseason as anybody, you know, Carter Seeley. Do they have the pitching? To, I guess if they had the pitching to back that up, they'd be one of the top teams in the country. But, you know, how are they going to get the arms to 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 back up there? Um, and, and, you know, Montville was obviously the legendary game they played in the, in the sectional final last year, Roxbury with Colin Richter. How is uh, Morris Knowles going to stay on top? I think, like you said, I mean, Brody Frecker's back, um, obviously he'll provide innings that he wasn't able to last year. Um, and then having Simone almost kind of protect Dickerson, like you said, um, I mean, he's exponentially just continued to get better and so forth too. And like you said, potentially going to be have his name called come July. Um, just a really good athlete. Obviously, he plays shortstop for these guys. He's played in the outfield and center field, which is where I think he's obviously going to end up. Um, but he's just such a dynamic athlete. He can change the game. Um, and then obviously Simone with the power and so forth too. Um, like you mentioned, Dylan Fitzsimmons, just those little pieces. I, I think it's I, I, it'd be tough for them to not be favored, obviously. Let's talk about Luke for a second because – not only, and and you can compare this to other guys throughout you know, the region that, that you've yep. seen, not only is he fast, I mean, he's, 
run as fast as a six two, I believe, in in the yeah, sixty yeah. at a, at a at a laser timed event. But he plays at like you've seen guys who are like like sprinters. You put them on a baseball field, it's not going to matter. But he like plays faster than he is. Even. Yeah, and it's and that's the thing. It's almost like we categorize it as guys that are fast and that run well, and then there's guys that float. And he almost floats, and it's just like. Oh, there he goes, and he goes there, and he gets to that ball, and then all of a sudden he hits a ball in the gap, and he's standing on third type stuff. Um, it's like next level type athleticism and speed for sure. Um, looking down at North Two, right? So you always have great competition in North Two, both at at the Group Three and Group Four levels. Group Four was. Uh, you know, for better or for worse, kind of got a little mangled last year with uh, with the Connor Byrne uh, situation, and 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 um, but Bayonne ended up winning the section. Was a very deserving sectional champ. Um, mm -hmm. They take some hits, obviously, talent wise, um, graduating. But anytime you start with Nolan Geisler on the mound, you're going to have a chance to win something. But it's more than that. Obviously, Westfield's got some big names coming back on the mound. Thomas Estero. Uh, Jack yep. Chavez, um, you never count out Ridge. They're always loaded, yep. um, and they're going to be again this year. Um, 100 and Central with Mike Contigliano. Um, oh, yeah. Ryan Lundari, that's a great place, uh, two, two building blocks to start. And then Randolph, again, you're talking about two building yeah. blocks. You know, you, yep. you talk about, again, one of the best pitchers in the state, and James Cliven. And A.J. Terry is phenomenal. Mason Wilson, if you Mason go down Wilson. another class, is like equally phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So that's a jacked up region. What do you see happening? So, I mean, having Cleveland back, obviously healthy, helps Randolph with regards to it. Uh, Bayonne, obviously, like you said, Nolan Geisler, they're obviously lost certain guys with Paradigm and so forth, too, and making that run. Um, they're going to obviously have to continue to find guys to help Nolan um, along the way, obviously, on the mound and kind of intermingle that lineup and find the right way. They're always going to be competitive. Um, Randolph's going to be tough. I mean, AJ Terry, like we just talked about Dickerson, not as crazy speed and stuff like that, but an exceptional athlete. I really like Mason Wilson in that 26 class. Um, really, really good athlete plus runner um, continuing to get fit more physical and stronger, really impacting the baseball now. So uh, they're going to be fun to watch for sure. We throw in a couple of sleepers because we like to do that. Um, you know, these are teams that would, in a, in a different section, might even be higher ranked at the start, but certainly have the ability to, you know, don't get knocked, you know, don't get up. A, a favorite getting bracketed against these guys could be in for a lot of trouble. Bridgewater Raritan is always strong, Jaden Rosado among others. And Woodbridge has made their, their name the last couple of years too. Um, you know, Eddie Nunez, Ryan Leach on the mound, uh, Drew Lukacek is, uh, getting, you know, better by the second, um, AJ Bosch flies might challenge mm -hmm. it. If you put AJ Bosch in a race against Luke Dickerson, I'd pay. Um, <laughs> what about them as sleepers? So, so I'm a big guy on pitching and when you have two of them that are pretty good and Ryan Leach, obviously, if he figures out the command stuff, the arm talent, certainly there. Same with Eddie Nunez. Both are into the upper 80s with pretty good breaking balls and stuff like that. Um, so you kind of can figure it where, like, if you have two guys, you got a shot for sure. And that, like, where we were talking about Westfield. Um, Westfield, may, not that they're going to surprise people, but having Sistero and Chavez, having Leach and Eddie Nunez, it's a different animal when you can go pretty one two one two one two kind of through that run. Um, so those are usually the teams that can make runs, deep runs and so forth too. So Woodridge got a shot, obviously with those two guys on the mound, um, as long as they command the strike zone and then don't lull out free passes. To group three, um, North two has been the, the Milburn Cranford district or a section for, for years. Yep. Um, and, and always will be, and they're not going away anywhere, but yep. is this the year that they are going to be in the rare position of of not the favorites um echevari has made a lot of money in pitching with oakland now um you know a lot of the uh the the guys that that were the the core of that group were seniors last year you know cranford lost 
as much offensive talent as anybody. When you talk mm -hmm. about Ryan Jaros and Shea Grady and, you know, the Shea Grady blowing it up at Bryant as, as a freshman, yep, you know, yep. Cran Cranford of the two might have a little more, it looks like on paper coming back. Uh, Ray Fry, Dennis McCaffrey, obviously is, as improved leaps and bounds. And, and you got a Mike Zalankanskis who's gotten some experience, this seems like the kind of team that that Chappie throws some some of that magic Milburn dust on, and they end up winning twenty games anyway. And then you wonder how, and you just wonder it's a great program. But you sure. look at te you look at teams like like North Hunterdon hasn't been for a while, but you know they look like they're back with capital B A C K with what they've got. <laughs> you add Zach Fronio to um, yep. Chris San, who's a stud, and Alex Famolari, who's obviously ridiculous. Oh yeah, um, and then my, one of my favorite sleepers, um, and and a team that I really grew to appreciate when I did the GMC year is is South Plainfield. They just come after you. Um, yep. You know Zach Robinson is uh, again. You can throw him in that fast player race, and it'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> um, Dominic Macero is a, a stud sophomore. Um, Aldo Pena is uh, one of those like uh, he's like when we were younger and every team had that lefty who was, was not six, five, I don't know where these guys come from anymore, but was like <laughs> a normal height lefty who just threw like the kitchen sink at you every time and, yeah. and competed and, and always beat you. So yeah, when you so, walk out of there, you walk out of there after five, six innings, you're like how that guy beat me. Yeah. You know, he's terrible. He's guard. <laughs> what do you do? I went, I went over four. You know, yeah. you know, he, he throws a three hitter in five, six innings and, and, and those guys. So, so what are we looking at in, in North two? I think, uh, like you said, North Hunterton with the addition, obviously of Fronio, Femilari, um, and Catiliano and so forth too. I think, like you said, they are back. Um, and just from a sheer personnel perspective, you probably have to go there. Listen, Milburn, Cranford, like you said, the coaches are always going to account for wins when you think they're not. Um, doesn't matter about the talent. So, like you said, obviously, Cranford's probably a little bit better on paper, but both coaches, Chappie and McCafferty, with regards to it, they're going to win games um, that maybe they shouldn't just based on their experiences or, or having almost the wherewithal or the thought process, hey, let's do this to kind of try to make something happen, and 99% of the time it works. Um, but I would say North Hunterton. I would say North Hunterton just based on what they got. Familiarity stuff is crazy, and it continues to get better. Uh, Frodio's obviously continuing to get better um, with regards to it. So, again, as you kind of – those pitching staffs that have multiple guys, different looks, can change it up. They're the ones that can compete and make a run. And, and obviously, if you get some offense, then you're good to go. Central Jersey has always had, like, they are the the – giant mystery enigma at the large public schools <laughs> the last few years and that's yep. like that's that's like the classic uh you know college basketball tournament when you anybody can win and and uh, you know it's not that there are good teams there's just so many like teams at the same the same level sure. um you know group three central looks like there's a couple that maybe differ or have, have have pushed a little further you got Lawrence with uh, Jimmy Mayer and the great run that they had last year, and 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 the core is pretty much returning. Mm -hmm. um, Allentown, I mean, Jack Sweeney is maybe the most uh, – I mean, if you know, you know, kind of, but he's also as good as anybody in the state. He's going to Rutgers. He's sure double-digit home run guy, and we like to say up in Mercer County, the, the parks are a lot bigger than they are in other parts of the state, and <laughs> still a double-digit home run guy. Um, Madawan, Brandon Falco emerged Falco. as one of the most ridiculously talented, uh, nasty, um, nasty stuff guys in the, in the shore in the state last year, you got Middletown North two-time defending champ, uh, Zach Hampton and, and, and Dylan Briggs and, and a good group there. Middletown South is itching to get back after it, um, with, uh, Lou D'Alessio, Mason Christopher, um, Northern Burlington. Um, yep, that was my probably, that was what I was going to come with. Probably a year or two away because <laughs> I, I feel like their studs that you'll talk about are, are still young. Yep. Um, Steinert always, Joey Ditta, Joe Loretti, 
strong group there. So I mean, sure. I just went through like seven teams that that all could <laughs> win. Give me yeah. your uh, give me your odds here. Let's let's lay some odds on these teams. I mean, and, I like talking about them. I like Middletown South. Obviously, Mason Christopher's continue to get better. Um, anytime he's that guy where. Maybe last year you talked about he's that lefty that you walk out of there and you're like, ah, it's okay stuff, and he beat me. But now it's like legit stuff up yeah. into the lower low 90s. And he's big, uh, too. Yes. And then you got Lou D'Alessio, uh, another kid, good runner. Um, I would have put him in the category of burner, but, like, it's it's an innate ability to kind of find the barrel all the time. And then you look up and you look in the box score, he's two for four with a double and a single, two or three RBIs. You got Brevin Bezik, who's kind of been – Let's say not a roller coaster, but he's battled some injuries and so forth too. So he's got a shot from the left side with regards to it. Um, uh, like you said, Allentown with Jack Sweeney, uh, seeing where other pieces of their lineup, he's got as much power as probably anybody in regards to the state or close to it. Let's say um, that Northern Burlington group, they're young, but I'm going to tell you this Cole Marchetti up into the upper eighties now with a legit breaking ball, um he's gonna get even bigger and faster and stronger um it's like a legit two three pitch mix with the ability to get people out uh Liam Valite has really done a, a real good job on his body um he's always had a pretty good arm he can swing it as well so that's gonna bring some some depth to their lineup Luca Menino all those guys I know they're probably a year away Ron Darling over there should coach him up a little bit but they're gonna be pretty exciting with regards to it as well um, so, yeah, to me, they're, they're like in the position Lawrence was in last year, yep. you know, yep. where, where you look at them at the start of the season and you say, well, they're probably a year away. They got some studs. And then you look at them in June and they're playing in the sectional final, you know? Yeah. So give me a winner there. Cause yeah. like I said, it, I, I'm going to, I'm going to hold you to that because it's, it's a pretty, <laughs> it's, 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 this might be this in South three, which we'll get to, or pro- might be the two toughest in the, uh, here to yeah. handicap. I mean, with having Maurer and the core back and him as a coach um, after that run and coming, I, I don't know if he can bet against it. I don't know. Uh, I mean, obviously they made a deep run and so forth too. It gives the younger guys some more experience uh, coming back. And again, I think as you get deeper into the playoff brackets and the, and the sections and the, and the state tournament and so forth too, coaching becomes more than it really is or that people expect. And, and listen, at the end of the day, people are like, ah, they're just high school coaches. In the state of New Jersey, there is some really, really, really good baseball coaches. Absolutely. And coach at the high school level um, that can win games just almost by themselves with regards to things. I mean, you will see it. We'll talk about it, obviously, later in South Jersey and the non-publics and so forth, too. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to go with Lawrence. Let's say we'll go Lawrence completes the run or finishes the story from last year. Lawrence Cardinal sectional champ. Two years ago, you could have got a lot of money for saying something like that. But that's the uh, the, the some great players and the Jimmy Mayer effect. So yep. group four central, Old Bridge last year, um, coming through as the team in the in the from the GMC with some some studs and some strong pitchers. Obviously, with Justin Hascup, they'll be back. Does Monroe take over the Old Bridge role for 2024? Because Harrison yeah. Wallen is the man. He's just nasty. Yep. Like, e- even when he was a sophomore, you could see, like, literally nothing phases the kid on the mound. Um, yep. You know, and then you got Lucas White and uh, and and the emerging Zach Wallace behind him. Um, mm-hmm. North Brunswick will be good. Uh, you know, uh, there'll, there'll be some other teams as well. But is is this Monroe's bracket or is somebody else going to come through and uh, take that? Like you kind of said, lowland has been another guy. It's like ever since he's been in high school, he throws a bunch of strikes and now he's got real stuff. So he's going to be tough to beat at any moment. Um, Lucas White, like you said, Zachary Wallace now pumping it into the upper 80s and so forth too. I'm a big fan, like I've said numerous times, that pitching depth is the key. If you have guys that can eat innings and kind of get to there, and then if you have Harrison Lolan waiting at the end, I'm going to probably bet on that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. South 4, all right, so South Jersey – South Jersey is like if you're not from South Jersey, you just don't understand. <laughs> you know, these are those brackets where, like, there's 16 teams in it, and like 14 or 15 of them are capable of winning their first game because they all have a stud <laughs> pitcher. Um, yep. Eastern got it last year. 
you know, again, it's one of those things where you just flip a coin and it was Eastern's turn. Sammy sure. wins it. His gets just gets better and better every year, and he's headed to Coastal Carolina. Um, Logan Dawson, who's one of the top talents athletically, probably in all of South Jersey, sure. um, hasn't you know been able to focus on baseball as much because he's so good in other sports. But he's nasty. Lenape Grant Hunter. I mean, the the, the Hunter family legacy. He's following nope. along very well with that. Um, Egg Harbor is always good. Southern Regional has become good again the last mm-hmm. couple of years. You get Sergio Draz. You got a uh, young Garrett Shapiro at uh, uh, Millville. Millville. Um, yeah. You got the. Uh, you know, you can't like Gloucester Tech. You can't even look past anymore. You know. Yeah. Um, no. You got a, and if you're facing Andrew Valet, the first round of states, you're, you better bring it or else you're going home. So sure. Give me a South four winner. <laughs> Good luck. I mean, it, yeah. And that's a tough one. Like you said, I mean, Winsett and Dawson, they're going to have to find more depth within the, obviously that roster and so forth too. Matthew Woods, obviously taking over at Lenape is going to help invigorate some stuff with regards to that. Matthew Kahn's back on the mound. Uh Southern Regional with Roger Dreyer and Brady Lissick is pretty good, too. You got two one-two punch right there. Um, they got a shot with regards to it. So, I mean, it's like you said, a crapshoot and go from there. I mean, like you said, P.S., Gloucester, let's make a note of Gloucester Tech. For all the good schools that they've played in high school baseball, Nick Spaventa goes to the Ivy League. And it's hitting like 450, yeah. by the way. Let's see. And sorry, let's let Gloucester Tech play and let's let him have Nick Spaventa for one more year and see what happens. <laughs> um, I mean, listen, like I said, that Southern Regional team, I think, too, those two guys are pretty good as well. Nobody really knows about them. So it's almost like you flip a coin like last year with Eastern and all of a sudden now they're in the final. They got one of those two guys at the end. Like you said, kind of topsy turvy, could go any way. Let's go Southern Regional. All right. I like it. I like it. Now, we're finishing today with uh, South Jersey Group 3. There's always a – I mean, I I pay attention to soccer once every four years. But there's always (laughs) – like when you have the World Cup, there's always this one group that has like every good country playing in it. And it's like the the death group and you like somebody who's like fifth in the world doesn't qualify and – so you got South Jersey group three and, and they're my, like the, the death group, like, like good luck trying to, yep. I'm going to, uh, you know, <laughs> trying to pick a winner here. Um, Shawnee's probably got the most attention at this point, as far as most of the preseason rankings, you know, Ben Hudson headed to Virginia. You got a uh, Danny, the destroyer, uh, the Scullion hitting the bombs like anybody else in the state. You got a loaded yep. team, but Good luck saying it's them because, you know, Cherry Hill West, you know, Slim Reaper uh, is uh, loaded for a a huge senior year. Ryder Garino on the mound. He's as tough as anybody. And Mm -hmm. John Young up the middle. I mean, if you're talking about pitching and up the middle, you know, you're not going to find much better. Um, Luciano McCree, you know, they're going to be tough as always. And Coach Mack will again you know he's got the South Jersey fairy dust that he he he, he you know throws on some of his guys and they'll be loaded. Yep. Delcy, this is like the year they were building for, right? Yep. I mean we, we can never forget. You know they won two years ago. They lost to Mainland in the final last year, and now you add uh, uh, Frank Ky- Kyron uh, from the left side hitting uh, yep. lower nineties to that. You know that's been like the one thing they'll if they get the pitching. Joe Smith will find a way to score enough runs to, uh, you know, sure. Smitty Ball will Smitty Ball will score runs no matter who he's facing. Mainland, the record last year was was, you know, they were banged up in the beginning of the year, and their record was yep. maybe five hundred, and people wondered where they came from. But that's a team that will moving forward be what they were in the states, not what they were in the regular season last year. Jake Logic is a beast. Finn Haynes yep. didn't even like pitch last year, and he's yeah. nasty. Um, you know, Luca Bruno coming over from, from Holy Spirit. So they're going to be jacked up. We haven't two teams that would like, like Evan Taylor is crazy. Yeah, He can beat anybody on any day. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you, I'm sure you can talk about Cam street a little bit. He's come on strong. Yep. Um, and then Morristown, right. So, so we're, we're leaving out the team with like, 
the the maybe the one of the best two or three righties in the state on the mound. Yep. Yep. And healthy Ch- Chase Crowberger, a kid who you've been high on for <laughs> forever and with good yeah. reason because now he's thrown in the nineties and he again let's get that fast <laughs> race and put Crow, Crow in there because even if it's not even if the you know and the numbers do but he he plays super fast. Oh, yeah. Um, Ethan Tolbert. Ethan Tolbert, yep. Um, Samson Martin, you know, some supporting guys. So so I'm just going to sit back and let you go off on, <laughs> on South Philly for a while. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, this one, this group specifically, or this section, I mean, the amount of arms literally in the 24-25 class, like you said, I mean, you got Logic and Evan Taylor who can re- literally beat anybody in the in the in in this area, if not the state. Um, Taylor, obviously the two way guy headed to Bama, um, where he'll join John Young Jr. The year after who has really actually made some swing adjustments. And I've liked what I've seen kind of over the winter with him, obviously continued to get bigger, faster and stronger as well. Slim Reaper going to South Carolina, um, can beat anybody. Like you said, Delcy too. don't discount Michael McGinley as a veteran leader along with Joe Smith and George Starr, and now you have carry on into the 90s, uh, it's going to be – they're going to be tough because they're just – it's loud in the dugout. They do the small things. Um, Joe Smith always has them ready to play and so forth too. I could go Delcy, Morristown if you get Ryan Lynch, and now you have Kroberger up to 93 in that lineup, Ethan Tolbert, so forth too. I don't know. I think it might be Delcy's year. Yeah, you know, if if Tyrone uh, can can do, you know, now that he's well known, um, yep. and can handle that being like this uh, a stud guy <laughs> around and and, sure. and you know, as long as you've got George at Delcy, you're going to have a little bit of a break because he's like uh, Mister Cleanup whenever whenever needed on the mound, so <laughs> yeah. it kind of takes away some of the pressure. Um, yep. You know, to have somebody like that, you know, Ma- guys like Max Van Auken, who's like Mr. Clutch, you know, mm-hmm. people who don't think clutch play is is a thing. Those analytic guys. No, I, I submit Max as part of the evidence because kid like his batting average goes up 300 points in in, in tough Listen, spots. We're seeing it again. We're going to go back to what this state of New Jersey and we'll tell everybody in the world. Right. A.J. Gracia's heartbeat is slower than everybody else's. That's why he's doing what he's doing in the ACC. Yeah, and 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 you mentioned Michael McGinley. I mean, the kid has three hits by the time he gets out of bed every morning. So, <laughs> exactly. Like, he's going to end up with 150 hits in, in South Jersey, which is insane. Yep. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, like, you got to pick somebody or somebody's got to end up winning it. Yep. Um, so, you know, why not them? But But like I said, the beautiful thing right now is – you probably got about 10 group three schools that, that can legitimately make that claim. So that yep. is our look at group four, group three, a couple of uh, sleeper players. I didn't mention Anthony and Nembo up at uh, Old Japan, um, mm-hmm. young stud catcher, um, Nico Maribo. We didn't mention Brick Memorial. We probably should have in the group three central. That's uh, my fault, but just so much talent spread across. I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. Let's finish with this. Group three and group four, maybe not the top public school team or the top teams like they've been in the past because of the non-publics that have taken over. Sure. But the depth of talent, the number of good teams, is that up there with with how it's been? Yeah, and I think that's you're kind of seeing a testament of it where everybody's got three, four guys. That lineup's kind of got depth to it. Everybody's got one or two dudes now on the mound that can kind of compete at any given moment. Um, obviously listen, if you get to the end and you have your guy, it's going to be tough for those, but there's going to be some really, really good games and some really good matchups, whether, and di- kind of discount the seedings going into it. Cause if you got a guy, you can beat anybody. Absolutely. We can't wait to get started. April 1st, uh, May madness, June madness coming right around Memorial day. We will see you guys out at the field. This is uh, for J Mac. This is Mike Olshin, and we thank you for watching.